Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. And uh, you got a roll call. Be happy to. Charles Smith. Here. Richard Hilton. Here. Katina Wilcher. Anna Ogin. Tammy Cruling Bogus. Stephen Summers. Here. Geraldo Rosales. Here. Jim Goss. Here. Diane Marlin. Carol Mitten. Here. Dennis Roberts. Deb Frank Finan. Patricia Avery. Present. Patrick Brown. We have a quorum. All right. Very good. First of all, I'd like to ask for the approval of the agenda, please. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Very good. Motion carried. Uh, next is um, audience participation. I don't see the one. Okay. So we'll move on. Uh, the minutes. Uh, RCP, I'm sorry, RPC uh, draft and, uh, meeting minutes from April 26, 2019. Did you all get a chance to look at them? Okay, very good. Is there a motion to approve the RPC draft and, um, meeting minutes from April 26, 2019? So moved. Okay, Steve? Second. Uh, second, Jim. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, consolidated financial report, Dr. Betty. Sure, so uh, you have the report from April 30th, 2019. Our fund balance was a little over 10.2 million. As of May, it was slightly down 9.844 million. Much of that are receivables from the workforce training program. Our volume is so high, so the receivables there were about 655,000. 522,000 was preschool for all, and the other uh, 200,000 was from LIHE payments. However, that said, the state payments are coming in on a regular timely basis. So that's just typical for the type of volume that we're experiencing here. Okay. Any discussion? Good morning, guys. Sorry that I was a little late. Sorry. Right. Um, Item B as well. Pardon me. Item B. Yes. Okay. Very good. Do I hear a motion to accept and place on file the consolidated financial report for April and May? So moved. Um, that was Patricia. Yes. Okay. Second. Steve. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 6. It looks like you're going to be busy. Sure. The list of bills. Again, this is typical for late spring, early summer. You know, we're in the midst of closing out a lot of the light heat payments, a lot of weatherization programming, tenant based rental assistance, and workforce. So there's nothing unusual to report. This is typical for this time of year. Okay. You made all that very short work. <laughs> <laughs> so do I hear a motion to accept and place on file the list of bills for April and May of 2019? So moved. Yeah. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Open Aye. carries. Item seven is action items. It's a bid proposal. You have that in front of you. Uh, this is the cleaning services for Early Childhood Education Center for Rantoul, Savoy, and Urbana. Good morning. Um, in front of you, I, I um, passed out the spreadsheet for the bid opening. Um, in June, we published a bid announcement seeking sealed bids to provide cleaning services at the RPC Early Childhood Centers uh, in Rantoul, Savoy, and Urbana. Following sealed bidding requirements, the announcement was published three consecutive weeks in the News Gazette, and the bid packet was available on the RPC website. We mailed the should be 14, not 18, hard copy bid packets. The bid opening was June 19th. On June 19th, we received a and opened four bids, as you can see on this spreadsheet. Service Master Clean proposed the second lowest bid that met all evaluation criteria, including positive reference checks. The contract for year one would be uh, $131,042, year two, $132,300, <laughs> 
and the same for year three. Um, I will answer any questions that you might have. Any questions so far, Brandy, about the issue? Uh, just uh, yeah. real quick, Brandy, yes. just on Bravo Services. Yes. Um, they had the actual, well, I guess Mad Dog had the lowest bid. But well, the, they were actually, only going to service Savoy, so I can understand yeah. why not even to bother with that. Um, but Bravo Services came in the lo next lowest mm -hmm. bid. Yeah, so we um, did uh, complete reference checks. Mm -hmm. um, and those reference checks did not come back um, good. Okay. Um, so we went on to the next lowest bidder, and that was Service Master Clean. Um, we did complete um, record our reference checks, and they did come out well. So that's why we chose uh, to proceed with Service Master. Okay. Any other questions, Yes, Dave. Um, curious, what was ESS's bid? Oh gosh, um, just a little. I think it's a little bit lower than the 147. Okay. Um, just a little bit lower, not much. You. You're welcome. Any other discussions or questions? I guess I do have one other question, and mm -hmm. I guess we wouldn't know that, but I, I'm always interested in the diversity of mm -hmm. the workforce. And do we know that this is, I'm, I'm sure they have to follow the federal guidelines in terms of hiring practices, but. Yeah, we, I don't we have know. No I, way of I do not know that, no. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Do I have a motion to approve the bid proposal for the cleaning services for early childhood and education centers for Antillo, Savoy, and Urbana? So moved. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Out of me, is early, I'm sorry, Head Start, Early Head Start training. Okay. Um, the end of the school year is approaching and we are in full recruitment mode to attract new employees and families. Um, in the last several weeks, the recruitment team participated in um, several events in the community, such as Champaign Farmers Market, the Urbana Farmers Market, Jetty Roads Community Event, and Juneteenth Event. Um, we have many more on the on the docket um, for the rest of the summer, so we're excited to get you know to meet new families and hopefully enroll them uh, for the upcoming school year. We also um, de decided to create. Um, video interviews with um, current families and current employees um, just to talk about their Head Start experience and uh, they turned out really well. Jason who usually videotapes here today, um, he actually completed that for us and um, actually took video of one of our centers and um, the videos came out really, really well. We're going to um, post them on the Facebook and um, RBC website. We also plan to um, post them at the movie theaters. So hopefully you'll see us um, see our ads out in the community, but we're really impressed with them and I'm very pleased that um, we had staff and parents to volunteer their, their time for that. Um, in May, our program was awarded the Champaign County Developmental Disabilities and Mental Health Board grants to support social emotional development special, the, I'm sorry, to support the social emotional development specialist and three social skills and prevention coaches for our sites. Uh, the staff in these positions offer social emotional support, service support for children, families, and um, classroom teams. In total, we received $326,672, and we so graciously um, you know, appreciate the support um, that these two boards have provided to us in the, in the last several years. In closing, uh, plans are underway for the Early Head Start expansion grant. We hope to be serving 50 children in, and pregnant women by September 3rd, 2019, and the remaining 40 um, by February 1st, 2020. We are in the process of hiring staff and ordering equipment and materials. We are fully underway trying to get that done, and, and Becky's been really helpful um, and supportive um, in meeting our goals. 
um, as we get further along, I, I will provide you with more updates. That's all I have. Thank you. Any questions for the call friends about these issues? <clears throat> Do I have a motion to accept and place on file the Head Start, Early Head Start Management Reports, including financial services and area reports from March and April 2019? So second. Motion in the second. Other discussion? Maybe none. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Item mm -hmm. nine on the agenda is um, some of the vision updates. And you know, sorry. So, as I mentioned earlier, we're working mm -hmm. hard to close out a number of our state grants that end June 30th. As you know, the state fiscal year is July 1, so we have a lot of state grants we're working on. To that terminate June 30th. We want to make sure all the final closeouts are submitted on time. We're also working on developing the FY20 budget, which will encompass a number of brand new grants and programs, and that will be presented to this board in August. Um, we continue to work on implementing the new independent service coordination grant, which will now serve 13 counties in Illinois. This will serve developmentally disabled um, residents in this 13 county area and so we're busy with recruiting staffing and making sure that they have the equipment and facilities they can use to begin servicing these clients in that area. We're also working as Brandy mentioned to identify and procure classroom facilities, equipment and staff for the new Early Head Start expansion program which will serve an additional 80 infants and toddlers and that's you know, a major effort that we're all working on together to make sure that we're able to start up fully by February of 2020. Uh, we've identified an office location in Tuscola to begin our workforce <coughs> development program there as part of the U.S. Department of Labor realignment. We're required to now serve residents in, Dus in Tuscola and we in Douglas County. So we've identified a location and we're going to begin uh, recruiting staffing and equipment for that new facility in Douglas County. We're excited to begin serving the residents there. So now we'll have a five county workforce region. We're going to have uh, two week long fiscal and programmatic monitoring of our child and adult food program, which runs through uh, Head Start. That's a massive undertaking because we get USDA federal funds to serve our children nutritious meals and snacks. And they come in here and monitor how we're doing that, whether we have sufficient quantities, whether we're accounting for that properly. And we're also going to have a week-long workforce development monitoring visit. This will be a fiscal and programmatic monitoring of our entire workforce program, which is about two and a half million dollars. So we're preparing for both of those visits. Okay. That's what I have. Thank right, you. Great. Thanks, Betty. Uh, next is um, Peggy. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I will make this uh, as quick as possible. And um, the reason why my, the HR department is so busy um, is because of all of the work that uh, my senior management team and their teams are doing. So we're expanding and growing, which means we need um, several talented individuals to support these programs. Um, as always, the human resources reports were in, included in your packets denoting personnel changes from April 18, 2019 to June 6, 2019 for your review. Um, as Brandy has mentioned, um, we are working on an aggressive talent acquisition um, strategies to support the expansions of the Early Childhood Head Start programs as well as the um, ISC programs. On Monday, we will be hosting 18 new employees to service over 13 counties um, with um, individual services coordination um, employees that will provide um, significant services for those expanded uh, counties. Um, our, market, our, our strategies for talent um, acquisition includes identifying what makes us distinctive, particularly with the early childhood program. Um, our tuition reimbursement program is distinctive. Um, we are working, we actually are marketing that program as this is big because the expansion in services for children and families as well as the need for talent uh, with the organization, it is big. Um, as Brandy mentioned, we are, have expanded those recruitment strategies um, to movie theaters, um, MTD buses have our logos, we're on hundreds of um, websites globally, um, which includes um, websites that um, are targeting 
um, individuals, um, veterans, um, individuals who are re-entering the work um, sites, as well as individuals, uh, uh, diverse um, applicants. Um, BIG, our program acronym for BIG for the Early Childhood Program um, is Build, Ignite, Grow. Mm -hmm. um, that program and marketing um, uh, strategy not only applies to how we develop our students, <coughs> families, <coughs> as well as employees. And we're going to do that through um, utilizing training funds to develop um, particularly um, individuals who perhaps have high school educations. Um, within 90 days, they can um, achieve a cert certificate in child development, which will take them from a teacher aid position to an early childhood teacher. So send all of those type of applicants to us, please. Um, this afternoon, the senior management team will be discussing our performance management and um, project management system. Um, we have entered into a contract with ReviewSnap, a project management, uh, predominantly a performance management system, which will allow our management team um, and entire team um, continue, continue um, constant um, feedback um, in regards to achieving goal, uh, objectives and goals. And the Summer Youth Program um, is going well this year. The um, Human Resources Department has successfully processed 125 um, new hire paperwork, and sh excuse me, um, work eligibility documents as well as um, um, tax forms for 125 students um, with the school districts of Champaign, Urbana, Muhammad, and Rantoul. So we we're, we're we are excited about um, summer youth every year, and um, the the number will be a little fluid for the next couple of months because the um, <coughs> programs are running through the end of August, um, and there are wait lists for the program. So I hope that we increase that number, hopefully by another 20 or so. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions. Yes. <coughs> Are you coordinating these uh, summer youth program hires to uh, the Champaign County Coalition? Um, I, our responsibility is the um, employer of record. So we do not recruit the students. That, that responsibility is on recruiters and program coordinators um, that are employed by the school districts. But my guess is they are working with the coalition. Okay, thank you. It's only a guess, but I, I believe so. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, who's taking over for Lisa? No report. Uh, no report. All right. <coughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, since last meeting, uh, RPC has created a complete count committee uh, for the purpose of reaching out to people hard to count in our community for the census. Uh, the committee includes one staff person from each RPC member agency, and uh, now we are in the process of reaching out to representatives from several organizations in the community to include uh, members from those organizations to help us out in the process of reaching out to uh, the people hard to count in Champaign County. With that, we also uh, are working with uh, staff person from the Census Bureau in Chicago to come here and provide a training in July for the members of the Complete Counts Committee. Then uh, that's moving on. Um, also, staff is working on doing residence surveys uh, in Douglas County through a consultant for the purpose of uh, completing the labor shed study for the Wioa area. And also we are starting the process of doing business services, <coughs> surveys in Champaign County to conduct an assessment analysis of uh, the businesses in our community for the development of the Wioa plan uh, by next year. Uh, staff, uh, Last uh, June 14, submitted a um, highway safety improvement program grant application, that's a safety grant on behalf of Champaign County for safety improvements on County Road 15, 
that's the road that connect uh, to Sydney. Uh, we identify the segment of Sydney, Sydney Road between Illinois 130 and the entrance to Sydney as a high priority segment in Champaign County. And we work with Jeff Blue, the Champaign County Highway Engineer, to put together a grant application. The grant application was for $4.5 uh, million. <coughs> and uh, we'll know about uh, getting that funding by August 30 of this year. Uh, Today in the morning, I received uh, good news. We submitted to IDOT statewide planning and research funds <laughs> grant last April. And I was informed this morning that IDOT approved both grants, but they are waiting to get the final approval from Federal Highway. And usually Federal Highway was with uh, the proposals uh, approved by IDOT, then hopefully we'll get both grants. And one of the grants is to conduct uh, safety studies at the top 20 locations identified through the Champaign County Safety Plan and the Champaign Urbana Safety Plan to do detailed safety studies at those locations. The amount of, those, of that grant is $106,000. And the second grant is uh, to use some of the models that we have already developed uh, in-house to do uh, kind of uh, use the technology to en engage the people in the community to <coughs> help us uh, in better ways uh, how they feel about accessing different sites in the community and the level of uh, the transportation infrastructure that is in place and what kind of problems they see or what kind of opportunities they see. Uh, that grant is for $200,000. We'll work with the community using uh, tablets and laptops and apps that we develop here in-house to get that input from them at public meetings. Uh, we are waiting to hear about the response that we submitted to the Illinois Center for Transportation for uh, the policy and design guidelines to plan for connected and autonomous vehicles. We submitted that uh, response to the RFP uh, last April, and we should know soon if we are getting uh, approved for that. Also, uh, we just completed the Champaign Urbana freight plan and freight model. We presented last Wednesday morning at the uh, Chamber of Commerce, and we are working on organizing business roundtables to present the plan and get feedback from the different businesses in the community and make them aware that now we have the first freight plan for our community, a freight model that can forecast uh, freight traffic into the future. Also, uh, through uh, funding that we got uh, from IDOT, uh, we just bought six permanent bicycles and pedestrian counters that will be installed on campus along with the MCOR project at three different locations. Through uh, those counts, we'll be able to obtain for the first time uh, pets and bike counts daily, 24 hours for 365 days. Then will allow us to assess better how the improvements that we are making with MCOR uh, bring more uh, walkers and bikers uh, on those areas. Then we'll have a detailed data that we can analyze. Uh, for that grant, we were able to get the funding through IDOT, but the installation of the equipment is being done by the university. Therefore, uh, the counters are installed on university property. Uh, lastly, I'm working with IDOT and Federal Highway on organizing a pedestrian safety peer exchange. The peer exchange is going to be held at the Illinois Terminal on September 10th and 11th, and we are expecting 100 to 175 people attending the peer exchange from the whole state, and the MCOR project will be one of the projects that will be presented as an example of improving pedestrian safety in our community. Any questions? Yeah, <coughs> yeah um, so I'm kind of curious about two things. The 20 uh, locations that you identified that you're going to be studying um, for safety, I guess mm -hmm. that was what it was, um, through a grant, federal transportation grant, 
Um, were they located in locations where um, there was there were uh, traffic accidents, or are there uh, structural issues about the um, about the street design that are a concern that you've identified? The way that we identify those top 20 locations, mm -hmm. we identify intersections and we identify segments separately. Mm -hmm. We look at the last five years of crash data and we take into consideration the number of crashes, the type of crashes, crashes with fatalities and type A injuries uh, are the highest that we consider when we do the weighting of those locations and we also look at the volume at those locations. Then through a formula that we put in place, we are able to identify the top 20 locations. But this basically based on crashes, type of crashes, traffic volumes, and the history of the locations. And does that include uh, pedestrian car accidents as yes, well? Yes, yeah. it includes all kinds of crashes. And is it um, in just Champaign-Urbana or is it Champaign County? Champaign <coughs> County. Champaign County. We have identified five segments, five intersections in Champaign County rural areas, five segments, five intersections in Champaign-Urbana. Okay. Then I had one other question. Um, it sounded really, I, I think it's really interesting to uh, have a new uh, technology to record pedestrian uh, foot, foot traffic and bicycle traffic. We really have been kind of soft about really knowing what those figures are. And, um, and you said that was like being supplied somewhat through the MCOR project. Well, the MCOR project is pretty much installed. It will be by the end of next year. Mm -hmm. So um, how, how will, be, will you be able to refer the new data to something that perhaps we don't really ever need very much data on? How can you tell, the, um, how can you relate the, the new data and the traffic that's being counted now to the oh. previous activities before the well, MCOR project? Before the MCOR project mm -hmm. started, as a requirement of the grant that we received, uh, we had to do <coughs> traffic counts at 15 different locations on campus. Yeah. Uh, it will not be comparable in terms of uh, the way that they were collected, but we had at 15 different locations on campus counts that we did for 12 hours continuously using cameras. Uh, in one day, you have an estimation of the number of pedestrians and bikers going through those locations. Then these counters will be, these first six counters will be located at one of those three or five, those three locations. Yeah. And we can select the same time period uh, from the counts that we have and even the same day and compare the before and after. This is a requirement of the grant. We need to report back to Federal Highway the changes on a uh, number of bikers, number of pedestrians, crashes, and um, transit ridership. That's, That's great point. because, um, oh, okay, you explained it really well. And uh, uh, yeah, this data has really been, um, I think, important for us to make future planning uh, because we have a really active biking community yes. and we don't really know, don't know too much about pedestrian traffic volume so much, so like we do with traffic. So, yeah. pedestrians are useful. difficult to count. Uh, yes, I imagine they are. Yeah. And jaywalkers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Any further questions? Thank you. All right. Do I have a motion to accept and place on file the four division updates for, I'm sorry, three division updates, physical human resources and planning and community development? So moved. Second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> <coughs> Motion carried. Item 10 is the CEO management report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first item I want to report on is uh, a couple weeks ago I was part of the Champaign County First delegation that went to Washington, D.C. to advocate on behalf of our county on some priority projects that we're hoping will be funded uh, by the federal government. We met with all of our um, the two senators as well as the members of Congress that are part of Champaign County, so both uh, Congressman Davis and Shimpus. We also met with uh, federal agency officials, so the Department of Transportation, uh, as well as USDA and others. One of the key meetings we had uh, was a meeting with the representative for Governor Pritzker's uh, administration in Washington, D.C. He is the individual that foresees all the policy work 
on behalf of the state of Illinois. So that was a pretty fruitful discussion. The delegation, uh, uh, I think some of you have been uh, part of that uh, delegation before, but it did consist of both uh, public as well as private um, uh, organizations. We had mayors of Urbana, uh, Savoy, and um, uh, some members of the city council as well as myself and others. And it was very well structured. It was a busy two days. Uh, we started early uh, in the morning and worked through uh, the entire afternoon. Uh, the chamber does provide a report uh, on not only the projects that we advocated for, but um, um, any other follow-up discussions that uh, have taken place as a result of uh, that meeting. Moving on to the state budget, um, we, I think, <coughs> I just pick on uh, Brandy's uh, programs, fared pretty well uh, in the budget that was passed by the General Assembly and signed by the governor. In particular, um, there's $50 million increase in early childhood block grant, uh, which would be through the Illinois State Board of Education, $28.8 million increase to the Child Care Assistance Program, which we also uh, take advantage of on behalf of our parents, $12 million increase to the Early uh, Intervention Program, uh, level funding for uh, home visiting, but the, the portion that uh, we have some great interest as a result of the expansion that I uh, heard in the earlier reports is that as part of the capital budget, uh, there's $100 million that was included for facilities, particularly for school and community-based early childhood programs through the Early Childhood Construction Grant Program. And so as soon as that information becomes available, uh, in terms of how we can apply for those resources, we're certainly not interested in pursuing some of those resources so we can either renovate our existing um, uh, facilities or uh, be able to acquire additional facilities so that we can continue to serve our community. Um, other than that, the last thing, uh, one of the programs that was also mentioned, the Independent Services Coordination Program, I'm not sure <coughs> who reported this at the last meeting, but it was awarded a national award by the National Association of County Officials. Uh, this is an award that was, um, we were nominated by the Director of Mental Health Board, and um, we are one of uh, the programs that will be recognized at the, at NACO's uh, convention, which is taking place next month uh, in Las Vegas. We, we will not have any representation, uh, at that conference, oh. but uh, the award was mailed to us, and uh, we're very grateful that our, our program was recognized at the national level. With that said, Mr. Chairman, I have no further uh, items to report. Very confusing to anyone. Is there any old business? Um, before we move on, I, I, I just want to thank the Litio for um, being a presenter at the Young Achievers Award ceremony in May. Um, that was my first time at the event, and it has been going on for many years, um, as a um, uh, organization who supports the parent commune, uh, we participated in, in that event. And Delizio was a presenter, and I found your story to be quite uh, incredible and very uh, moving. I, I thought it, out of all of the stories that the presenters told yours, really, I'm sure, fell on the ears of those kids uh, very well. And it told, it talked about how the importance of education. I don't know, you all may have heard Delizio's story, but it, it was fascinating. And it just said to those kids that were listening how important education is. And uh, I appreciate it, you being there to present to those young people. Um, so I thank you for all of your work. This is no old business, but before you get into new business, I just want to say that to every one of you, um, the work that you are doing here at RPC has an effect 
to change the lives of people. It really is quality of life issues that you're dealing with here at the Regional Planning Commission. And I know that you all work very hard to make sure that the people that you reach are getting the best quality of care and services that you can offer. And I appreciate that because your reach is, is, is broadening each and every year. And uh, you all know that I, I care a lot about many issues, uh, especially in the underserved communities, because for many, many years as a child growing up, I didn't have access to a lot of services that are now currently being offered to people who look like me. So I would just say keep up the good work. And I really appreciated the opportunity to serve as one of your commissioners. Um, I get a little emotional because I am transitioning from Champaign County, which I love, to um, Atlanta, Georgia uh, area where my youngest and oldest reside uh, so that um, I can be a part of my daughter's new venture. She's, she's a new uh, entrepreneur and her business is growing and expanding rapidly. She's in the um, ginger, natural ginger juice business. So we'll make sure you all get links to the information. <laughs> so if I'm going to be in part of production and distribution and marketing. Um, but I really, really uh, will um, miss you all and, and I really appreciate the work that is being done um, here at Regional Planning and I do appreciate the opportunity and I share it with uh, Mayor Finan, the opportunity to serve as a representative of the city of Champaign. So, just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you. Uh, under, it, it was going to fall under new business, but since I'm old and, and it's kind of new, we just fall right in between there, okay? <laughs> I'm going to have to excuse myself. I have an appointment coming up and I have to leave. Sorry, Ms. Berger. I'll let it hear for uh, brief cycling. Yeah. <laughs> well, Patricia, we're sorry to hear that you're leaving the community and the area, but uh, I'm sure you'll always be attached emotionally here. Yes. At our so yes. thank you for all you've done. Thank this you. Board in Champaign County as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there will be a retirement, kind of a transitioning party, so you all are invited. Oh, <laughs> Maybe serve some ginger. Yeah, <laughs> the ginger juice will have it there. Ginger Yums <laughs> is the name of the. The, uh, is there any new business? Okay. I've asked for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Steve? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. So